Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob and today we're going to be checking out another home theater projector from BenQ. Their brand new GP500 smart 4K projector with built-in Android TV. It was recently unveiled at CES 2023 and looks like it could be a great addition to any home theater setup. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so as I mentioned, today's video is gonna be about the BenQ GP500. And you might notice that it looks kind of similar to the TH690 XT that we already reviewed. And that's because both of these projectors use a very efficient four LED light source that can get up to 20,000 hours of lamp life in normal mode and up to 30,000 hours in eco mode. But unlike the TH690 ST, which was designed as a gaming projector, the GP500 is designed to offer better image and sound quality, so it's more geared for use in a dedicated home theater, and comes with some really nice features that we'll talk more about in a little bit. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out what's inside the box. As usual, BenQ provided all the documentation you're gonna need to set it up properly, and you can also go to their website to see the user manual online if you'd prefer to view it that way. You also get a really nice remote that connects over Bluetooth and IR, and of course, you also get a couple of AAA batteries and a power cord. Now, as we mentioned, this is a smart projector, and the way BenQ accomplishes this is by providing their own Android TV streaming stick called the QS01, which does need to be installed, but it's really easy, and we're gonna show you exactly how to do that later in the video. Aside from that, you also get the projector itself, which was packed really well, so there shouldn't be any problems with any kind of shipping damage. This is a 4K DLP projector that can give you a full 8.3 million pixels on screen, thanks to its use of a pixel-shifting 1080p Texas Instruments DLP chip. It also comes with some really nice features like support for 3D content, HDR10, HLG, and 90% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. The light source that I mentioned earlier is also rated to output 1500 ANSI lumens, which should be more than enough if you're using it in a light-controlled room. Taking a look around the projector itself, the first thing you probably noticed about the GP500 is just how tall it is, but BenQ did this for a reason, which we'll get into shortly. Looking at the top, you get the manual zoom control for the lens, as well as an ambient light source which can automatically adjust the brightness of the projector to best suit your room. We chose to leave this off because we like to test projectors at their fullest brightness, no matter how much light is in the room. You also get a Bluetooth button, which lets you turn the projector into a Bluetooth speaker via your smartphone, as well as volume up and down buttons, and of course, a power button. Moving on to the sides, you can see the metal grills covering the built-in Travolo speakers, which is another one of the big upgrades over the TH690ST and is also one of the reasons for the extra height of this new projector. Above that, you can see the grill covering the built-in cooling fans that are remarkably quiet, so they shouldn't be a nuisance even if you're sitting close to the projector. Looking at the connections on the back, BenQ included two HDMI 2.0 ports, which can accept up to 4K at 60 Hz, with one of them being an HDMI ARC port, as well as two USB ports for hooking up fiber optic cables, and a pair of audio outputs, which consist of a 3.5 millimeter and a Toslink in case you want to connect this projector to a bigger sound system. And of course, you also get a regular AC power input. On the bottom of the projector, BenQ added these four M4 threaded mounting holes, which is compatible with universal projector mounts like the one BenQ sells on their website. For our testing though, we're just gonna be setting it up on a table and using the included adjustable feet to get the projector level with our screen. Now, as we mentioned, this does come with a streaming stick, but the cool thing is, rather than taking up one or two of the HDMI ports on the back, you can actually install the TV stick inside of the projector and have it ready to go at all times. To do this, you just have to remove the two screws on the back, slide the top panel off, where you'll see another HDMI port inside of the projector, along with a USB power cord for the streaming stick. The thing I like about this type of solution is if the TV stick ever goes out, or you just wanna upgrade at some point, you're not stuck replacing the whole unit. Instead, you can just get a new TV stick of your choice, and if the micro USB power cable reaches, you're good to go. 
If you are considering purchasing this projector, you may be wondering if it'll work in your room and what size screen is needed to achieve the best picture quality. Well, according to BenQ's manual and their online projector distance calculator, the GP500 can do anywhere from a 40 inch to a 200 inch image, but to get the best results possible, they recommend using a screen between 55 and 120 inches diagonally. As far as the type of screen goes, we're using a white 120 inch screen with a 1.1 gain material from Elite Screens, which is best suited for a light controlled room like our dedicated home theater. Now, you could also go with an ambient light rejecting screen to get better blacks and contrast if you're going to be using the projector in a room that isn't 100% light controlled, but that would be an added cost, and the more light you have coming into the room, the less of a difference an ALR screen will make. Firing up the projector, you're immediately greeted by the simple setup menu that is very well laid out and does a great job walking you through the initial configuration. Here you can set up things like how the projector is mounted, digital keystone to make the image fit your screen better, and an automatic screen size and focus adjustment to fit the projector's image to your screen. One thing to keep in mind though is if you're going to use the digital keystone, automatic screen resize, or object avoidance modes, these will actually lower the resolution of the projector and degrade the image quality, so it's best only to use these features if you absolutely have to. One feature that we absolutely love about this projector is the automatic focus adjustment, which uses a small camera on the front to dial in the focus. We played around with this feature a lot at different image sizes, and it was basically spot on every single time, which was pretty impressive. Now I have to admit that I'm pretty new to this type of setup, but compared to my Panasonic projector, which requires manual focusing using the remote, the BenQ system seemed to be more precise and much more convenient to use, and its automatic focus made the process quite a bit easier. After completing the initial setup, you can also access the main setup menu to customize the image settings to your preferences. However, during our testing, we found the default living room preset provided the best results, and we didn't feel like we needed to make any further adjustments. After completing the setup process, we decided to test the projector by streaming movies using the built-in Android TV stick, and we also took this opportunity to check out the rest of the Android TV interface, which worked as expected for a Google TV certified device. It is worth noting though that BenQ projectors do not have native support for streaming Netflix. However, it is possible to watch Netflix using certain workarounds such as casting through a browser or using an external device. Picture quality is perhaps the most crucial part of a projector, and the GP500 does not disappoint in this regard. Its colors are vibrant, bright scenes are well lit, and dark scenes retain a remarkable level of detail. One thing that I've always appreciated about my Panasonic projector is its ability to produce a more cinematic image that doesn't appear as digital as other projectors, and the GP500 has a similar quality. Its image has a natural film-like appearance that I tend to prefer. As expected, the GP500 performed exceptionally well with standard dynamic range content, However, we were even more impressed when we started watching HDR movies and TV shows. Many projectors struggle to accurately reproduce HDR content due to their inability to produce enough light output, but the GP500 didn't have this problem. And again, you want to make sure that your room is properly light controlled to get the best results possible. As mentioned earlier, the GP500 takes advantage of pixel shifting to display 8.3 million pixels on the screen, resulting in a true 4K image. Despite using a DLP chip, we didn't notice any rainbow effect while watching movies unless we really looked for it, and the image was a lot sharper than we expected to see from a pixel shifting projector. In fact, it was so good, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this projector and one that is native 4K. The black levels on the GP500 are good as well considering it's a projector. While they're not as deep as you might see on a good LCD display, they are by no means poor. In some scenes at full brightness, the blacks appear to be more of a dark gray rather than a true black, but part of that has to do with our white positive gain screen material and some ambient light bouncing back onto the screen. We were also really impressed by the bright and vivid colors on the GP500 which looked natural and realistic without appearing oversaturated or overblown. All the colors, including skin tones, looked authentic. 
And with a little time spent adjusting the settings to your liking, the picture quality could be improved even more. Now, even though this isn't really a gaming projector and it lacks support for features such as VRR and 120 hertz refresh rate found in newer gaming consoles, it still has a fairly low input latency of 25 milliseconds, which made playing games on the GP500 a very enjoyable experience on both PS5 and Switch. The Travolo speakers built into the GP500 were surprisingly good, similar in quality to a good soundbar. The projector offers several different modes to choose from, and we found the cinema mode to be the best profile. The cool thing about these speakers is how you can remap the left and right channels to correspond to your listening position. Now, of course, as a home theater channel, we always recommend investing in a pair of speakers or a surround sound system with a receiver to achieve the best experience possible. However, it is worth noting that the built-in speakers on the GP500 are on par with those included on the TH690ST, and I have to say we were pretty impressed. Ultimately, the GP500 excelled in its intended role as a convenient smart movie projector. It delivers exceptional image quality and is easy to set up, and at an MSRP of $1799, we feel that BenQ is offering a lot of value for the price that they're asking. So if you're in the market for a compact 4K smart home theater projector, then you should definitely put the BenQ GP500 at the top of your list. And with that said, I think it's time to go ahead and wrap up this video. You can learn more about this projector on BenQ's website, and we'll make sure to leave a link down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.